Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is lesson eight in the teacher leadership training offered by the Leadership Society of Arizona. This is one of my favorite lessons. It's a very simple one. And we're going to go over the concept on the screen, understanding the cycle of change. Because one of the things as we move forward here is that what is the purpose of education? Well, the purpose of education is for the student to learn, to grow, to improve. And this is a big thing that we want to get. This is the end result of all education that we're hoping students pick up, is that when they learn something, that they actually change. They actually adjust what they're doing. For students, I always tell them, the most important thing they can learn in life is this quote. Things that don't change remain the same. Such a simple quote, but very profound. Because oftentimes in students, and in many people, when they're looking at life, and, and I always tell them, hey, you're here right now, you're in school, your life is miserable, at least most students. They say, my life is miserable, people tell me what to do, I can't go out and do what I want, um, I'm being controlled. Well, I say, well, you're here now and, and you're the bottom line, right? You're, you're not so happy right now. Well, what are you going to, are you going to be happier in 20 years? What do you hope to expect in 20 years? And they usually tell me, well, I'm going to be really rich. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to have a family. I'm going to have a car, expensive car, big house. I say, okay, well, how are you going to get that? Is it just going to appear? They say, well, no, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to be older. I was like, well, let me ask you a question. Well, why aren't you wealthy right now? Why aren't you more successful right now? Why don't you have a fancy car right now or a big house right now? And they say, well, because I'm just a kid. I'm in high school or I'm in junior high and I have to go to school. And I tell them, do you realize that there are students your age that they are very wealthy? They do own an expensive car. They might not be able to drive it, of course, but they own a big house. They have tons of money. They're very successful right now at your age. And of course they know because they have the internet. They see these people out in the world. I say, well, why are they more successful than you right now? And if you're looking to be more successful in the future and happier in the future, do you think time is just going to build that gap? Does every adult, do they earn a lot of money? Does every, is every adult happy? Is every adult successful in what they want to do? And of course the answer is no. And I try to help the students understand that if this is you now, and you do the exact same thing for the next 20 years, you're not going to change one bit. Your happiness level is not going to increase one bit. It's going to be exactly the same. Yes, you might have a different environment. Yes, you might be older. But here, you're being told what to do. You're going to get a job that also you're being told what to do. Here, you're, you don't understand your friends, you don't have good relationships. Here, you're also not going to understand your friends and have good relationships. Because everything is going to stay exactly the same if you do things the exact same way. The only way you can increase your success, the only way you can increase your happiness, is instead of being like the bottom line, you have to be like the top line. You have to change, you have to improve. Or, in other words, only if you change can you be like the top line. And if you don't, you stay like the bottom line. And this is the crux of what education is really supposed to do. It's supposed to teach students how to increase their happiness over time. But the only way to do that is to get them to learn, to grow, to change. Now, what people don't realize is as you learn and change, as you develop, well, the same things that make you a video game champion, what makes someone a video game champion? Well, first they have to learn to improve quickly at a video game, right? There are tons of people playing these e-sport games now. In order to become the best, you have to really understand. You have to be able to measure yourself. You have to have leadership. You have to have all of these skills to be able to quickly grow and learn and become the best at it. 
Amazingly, these same skills are the same skills you need to be a business executive and very successful in the world. The ability to change, the ability to learn how to adjust, how to improve, that's those skills is really what is required. And it's what we want to be teaching students as they go through the education. It should be what they're learning. Now, amazingly, people don't realize they can learn this in any aspect of life, right? So we want to find first individual-centered. Who is a student? What do they care about? Second, we want to make it real simple, teaching them the patterns and natural laws in life so that they can actually see into the future, know exactly what needs to be done and what direction they're headed. And now we're going to get into the third principle, which is action focus. That in order to truly change and improve, they have to do something. So this is what we call the cycle of change or the cycle of learning. And it shows all the steps that someone has to go through to improve. First, you have to observe something in life. You have to observe some type of information. Then you have to think and make decisions about it. Of course, as we learned, we want to minimize the thinking and decision making with principle two simplicity structure. That leads to the students actually applying, actually going out and doing something. And it's only by doing something that the student can then change, grow, and improve. And this is what we're really trying to get at with the third principle now of action focus. We want them to do something so that they learn. And the learning is always going to lead to the observation of more information that will then allow them to be better and to do things better. Now, when we look at the cycle of change, the application right now is the most critical part. It's not the thinking and making decisions, right? Because a student that just sits down and thinks and makes decisions, they're never doing anything. They actually aren't actually growing. In order to complete the cycle, you have to apply. And so this is a major thing we're going to hit on now. And it is what's leading us into the third principle of the no influence mentoring um, philosophy. And it's what leads us into the third principle of the no influence mentoring um, philosophy. Thank you for watching. If you like the video and you want to see more, press the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll answer them in future videos.